Welcome back guys. In this video lecture, we're going to talk about impact and how to solve problems involving impact. First of all, let's define the word impact. Impact occurs when two bodies collide during a very short time period. And I'm going to insist on this word here. So it's a very short time. However, this impact will cause large impulsive forces to be exerted between these two bodies. These two words are very important. The first one is that the impact occurs on a very short time. The second word is that this impact will cause large impulsive forces to be exerted between these two bodies. Why I am focusing on these two points? Because in fact, later on, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use that the duration of impact is very small. And I'm going to use that the impulsive forces are very large. So I'm going to use these two, uh, 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 these two words or these two statements later. In order to understand how uh, to solve the problems of impact, I want you guys to define two things. The first one is the line of impact, and the second one is the plane of impact. Now, the line of impact is the line through the mass centers of the colliding particles. Now, these two particles are colliding. This is the first center of mass. This is the second center of mass. This is the line of impact. So it's the line intersecting these two centers. The plane of contact is always perpendicular to the line of impact. Which means, guys, this plane of contact, which is the common tangent between these two particles, will always be perpendicular to the line of impact. From here, I can define two types of impact. The first one is called the central impact. In this case, the direction of velocities of these two colliding particles are along the line of impact. As you can see here, VA and VB, they are along the line of impact. And this is a very simplified uh, case because you, you're going to see that two equations can solve the central, of impact, the central impact. Now, the second case is called the oblique impact. And in this case, the direction of motion of one or both particles is at a certain angle from the line of impact. So it could be VA, could be VB, could be both of them. They are not along the line of impact. At least one of these two velocity is not along the line of impact. So this is called oblique impact. It's more complicated than the central impact because it needs four equations to be solved. Okay, guys? So please uh, recognize the difference between central impact, where the velocities are along the line of impact, which is perpendicular to the plane of impact, and the oblique impact, where the one of these two velocities, at least one of them, is at a certain angle from the line of impact. Now, how to solve, first of all, the central impact? In fact, guys, as we described uh, previously, the central impact happens when the velocities of the two, both objects, are along the line of impact. And recall that the line of impact is the line intersecting the mass centers. Now, guys, I want you to know that at this line of impact, there is always what is called the conservation of linear momentum. Remember, guys, what is the conservation of linear momentum? The conservation of linear momentum occurs when the sum of impulses is equal to zero. I'm saying here that the conservation of linear momentum always occurs 
for the system of particles along the line of impact. So if I know the line of impact, I can apply the conservation of linear momentum. And since here the impact occurs between two particles, then MAVA plus MBVB before, just before this impact, should be equal to MAVA plus MBVB just after this impact. Now the question is, why is there a conservation of linear momentum? How can I demonstrate that the sum of impulses is equal to zero. In fact, guys, I'm gonna use this relation right here. I have large impulsive forces during impact, right? So I'm gonna use this statement right here. What does this mean? This means that if I have this system, there are gonna be large impulsive forces, which means these impulsive forces for particle A, this impulsive force for particle A, will overcome all other forces, and all these forces along the line of impact will be equal to zero compared to this impulsive force, as well as for B. Not only this, if I take the system of particles A and B, the impulsive forces will be opposite and then they will sum to zero they will be cancelled because the impulsive force done from a to b will be equal to minus the impulsive force done from b to a in the vector form and this means that the sum of impulses on this system of particle along the line of impact along this line of impact will be equal to zero. So I will be equal to zero just before the impact to just after this impact. And from here comes the conservation of linear momentum along the line of impact. So don't forget this. This is applied along the line of impact. Now what will give me, what uh, uh, will give me uh, this relation? In fact, this relation will give me the first equation for central impact. So it will give me that MAVA plus MBVB just before this impact before impact will be equal to MAVA plus MBVB just after impact. Okay, if I know VA and VB before impact, so let's say I know VA and VB, but I don't know VA and VB after impact. So here I have one equation to announce. What is the second equation? The second equation is the, the equation of coefficient of restitution. Coefficient of restitution, which has the symbol E, stands for the amount of energy that is not lost, which means if E is equal to one, this means that nothing is lost. And this means that this impact is elastic, which means I know that the elastic zone, if you go guys to the mechanics of materials, I know that for elastic zone, I have a restitution, which means the deformation will be returned to, or the, the deformation will vanish whenever I remove the forces and the lengths will be returned to its initial lengths, all right? Now, if I have a plastic deformation, then this means that a percentage of this deformation will be permanent. It will stay, all right? So I'm going to repeat. If the coefficient of restitution is equal to 1, this means that 100% of the energy is not lost. So 
it's I don't have any losses in energy. 100% of this energy is restituted. Now, in this case, this impact is called elastic. If the impact is plastic, this means that the coefficient of restitution is zero. And in this case, there are huge losses. And in the, in the plastic impact, these two particles will collide and will stick to each other. And then they will continue their path as if they are one particle. Now, there is, of course, some intermediate uh, case an intermediate case between the ideal case, which is the case of elastic, and the worst case, which is the case of plastic. In this case, E will be between zero and one. And this means that there is a percentage of losses. So some energy will be lost in form of heat, in form of sound, or in form of deformation. In this case, E will be given, and E will be between zero and one. Like this case, for example, steel on steel, if I have two steel particles, the typical value of the coefficient of restitution is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. So what is the relation of the coefficient of restitution? The relation of coefficient of restitution is equal to the difference of velocity after impact over the difference of velocity of particles before impact, right? So E will be equal to VB2 minus VA2 over VA1 minus VB1. If I have an elastic impact, as I said, then E will be equal to 1, which means VB2 minus VA2 will be equal to VA1 minus VB1. And you can prove it, guys, using the kinetic energy or the work and energy principle. I'm going to tell you how later on. If I have a plastic impact, and in this case, guys, the particles will stick together and move with the common velocity after the impact, then this E will be equal to zero. And it's clear, guys, if E is equal to zero, then VB2 is equal to VA2, which means VB after impact will be equal to VA after impact. They will stick together and they will be as one system. Typical values for some common cases will be given in the question, and in this case, this will be the second equation. So I'm going to repeat. In case of central impact, I have two equations because I have I, I, I will have two unknowns, guys. I should have two unknowns to solve for the central impact. Maybe I can ask you to find the, the, the velocities before impact if I know the velocities after impact or vice versa. So I should have two unknowns, and I'm going to use two equations. The first equation is the conservation of linear momentum along the line of impact, and this will give me this relation. And the second equation is the coefficient of restitution that must be given inside the question, either, for example, uh, by giving me the type of impact, so by saying that this impact is elastic, so I know then that E is equal to 1. I can say that the impact is plastic. Then I know that E is equal to 0. Or I can give you explicitly what is E, and then you can find the second equation. Now, this is for the central impact, which is a very simplified case. 